Well, just about anybody can use RPG Maker to create a retro-inspired role-playing game. Very few have been able to make them stand out. These titles often come from inexperienced programmers who are full of enthusiasm but lack the chops to create a truly compelling adventure. But perhaps that's about to change, because Echoes of Etheria is a surprisingly strong quest that's filled with sharp writing, a great sense of pace, and memorable characters. One of those characters is Lucian, a loyal soldier that leaps into action when Princess Soha is kidnapped on her wedding day. Along the way, he meets up with Ingrid, a snarky blonde who accidentally gets mixed up in a conspiracy that could go all the way up to the top. Before long, our heroes are accused of being traitors and forced to set off on an epic adventure to clear their name and defeat the real traitors. Okay, so it's not the most original setup I've seen in a role-playing game. But Echoes of Etheria knows how to keep the story moving with lots of fun twists and turns. It's also not afraid to jump between different perspectives without warning. The writing is confident from the get-go, expertly shifting from one character to the next and hoping players will keep up. This foreshadows some of the narrative tricks the game will employ later, and shows that the writers are in firm control over the story. The same could be said about the gameplay, which manages to pay homage to the classics while still feeling like a brand new beast. The look and play will immediately remind you of the 16-bit role-playing games we saw on the Super NES two decades ago. Our pixel characters roam through varied locations and play into all your favorite JRPG tropes, while simultaneously fixing some of the archaic elements that plagued a lot of those old-school games. Players burned out on never-ending random battles can breathe easy, because Echoes of Etheria gives you control over fighting the wide variety of monsters that inhabit the land. The battles play out using the familiar turn-based approach, though visually the action is presented from a slightly altered perspective. The five-person party will choose between the usual attacks, magic spells, and items to use, whatever works best in the given situation. As they fight, a shared meter will power up and allow each hero to unleash a powerful strike or cast a defensive spell. This simple change helps us speed up the action and gives us one less thing to worry about. When you step back from the changes made to the combat, you'll see that the entire game has been streamlined in a lot of necessary ways. The adventure is split up into a series of bite-sized missions. These quests see players clearing out one section of the map before moving on to the next, giving us a sense of accomplishment with each completed chapter. This is a great way of showing off how diverse the world is. Instead of spending time aimlessly wandering the hillsides, each area is quick to get to and always self-contained. I also like how accessible the game is to casual RPG fans. You won't need to scramble to use healing potions between fights, because each battle sees our hero start at 100%. What's more, you can always retry the fight if you end up dying in battle. And if that's not enough, players can make major changes to their party before attempting the fight a second time. Gone are the days of losing significant progress because you accidentally died fighting a tree monster. But even with all these user-friendly changes, it's not the combat that's going to stick with me. When I look back at my time playing Echoes of Etheria, I'll remember how beautifully developed each and every one of the characters is. Time has been put into not only making each of the fighters unique, but turning them into relatable characters. They have dreams, ambitions, and flaws, all of which is perfectly expressed through the ambitious script. As much as I want to gush over the compelling characters and snappy writing, I can't overlook some of the game's flaws. While Echoes of Etheria nails the combat and story, it completely fumbles everything associated with buying and selling items. Sure, you can pick up new weapons at the shop between missions, but it's nearly impossible to tell if the equipment is better than what you already have on. I found myself spending hundreds on useless gear, only to find the resell value was little more than one or two coins. I got to the point where I stopped using the shop altogether. It's also worth mentioning that the game suffers from a few annoying difficulty spikes. You'll spend most of your time beating up easy enemies, only to be suddenly thrown into the deep end with fire-breathing baddies ready to gang up on you. It's even worse when the enemies start with the advantage. You'll eventually need to spend time grinding through bad guys in order to stand a chance against some of the tougher bosses. 
As a longtime fan of JRPGs, I'm used to grinding levels and dealing with inadequate shop details. However, I'm not used to using an analog stick to move around the 16-bit landscape. Echoes of Etheria supports a wide range of game controllers, but all of them seem to map the movement to the analog stick instead of the D-pad. While this may not sound like a big deal, I found myself constantly running into problems with the default settings. But even with a few missteps, I was surprised by how engrossed I was in Echoes of Etheria. I found myself sucked into the action and excited to see where it led me. I loved spending time with these characters and watching their conversations. Dancing Dragons game's newest title doesn't just look the part, it offers a fast-paced adventure that drips with authenticity. Hey, thanks for watching our review. I'm not sure how it happened, but suddenly I'm swamped with brand new 2016 games to review. Tuesday brings reviews of both Gemini Heroes Reborn and the Deadly Tower of Monsters. And then I still need to take a look at Between Me and the Night and Human Fall Flat. We also have the Nintendo Power Best and Worst of 1993 episodes coming soon, as well as another episode of the Game Pro Game Show. I guess what I'm saying is that we're incredibly busy and you should click the subscribe button. Until then.